There are few planes in history that are as admired as the Supermarine Spitfire. It played a pivotal role in the battle against Germany for air supremacy during World War II. But the German counterpart, the Messerschmitt BF-109, was a worthy adversary. Both planes, powered by huge V-12 piston engines, could surpass 350 miles an hour. There was just one problem. The Spitfire had a significant weakness against the German fighter planes. If it wasn't for the ingenuity of a young female aeronautical engineer, many Spitfire pilots would have died. This video is made possible by Wreck Watches, supporting the restoration of a Mark 1A Spitfire that scored 15 victories during the Battle of Britain. Early in World War II, 1940, a year and a half before the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. Initial versions of the Supermarine Spitfire had an alarming flaw. When performing negative G maneuvers, such as a dive or a roll, the engine would cut out or stall, as you can see here. Coming out of that roll, that puff of black smoke is a sign of surplus fuel. To understand what is happening here, and for those of you unfamiliar, a little background about what a carburetor does and how it works. The carburetor blends air and fuel for an internal combustion engine. The air-fuel mixture continues on and enters the piston cylinder to power the engine. Now the level of fuel here is important as it affects the flow rate into the mixing chamber. Down here is the choke valve, which doesn't really apply to this discussion. But up here is the throttle. When the throttle valve is opened, the amount of fuel-air mixture to the engine increases resulting in more power. The level of fuel here is important as it affects the flow rate into the mixing chamber. An over-rich fuel mixture will not cause an increase in power. Rather, it will stall the engine. Remember this for later. This type of carburetor was okay for cars, but for a plane that can turn upside down and enter deep dives, it struggles. If the plane enters a negative G dive, fuel is forced to the top of the float chamber, resulting in the first loss of power, starving the engine of fuel. The carburetor then compensates and brings more fuel into the float chamber. Now there's too much fuel, and the resulting air-fuel mixture will flood the engine and stall it. Now, that clip makes a lot more sense. That extra fuel is the black smoke we see here. German pilots quickly spotted this flaw and it gave them an edge in dogfights. Why? Because the German planes did not have carburetors. Rather, their engines were fuel injected and didn't suffer from the problem. With the war raging in the skies over England, what is commonly known as the Battle of Britain, Britain needed a quick fix. Enter a bright young female engineer working for the Royal Aircraft Establishment. Beatrice Schilling was an extraordinary woman. She was born in England in 1909, and prior to World War II, she raced motorcycles. In fact, she was one of only three women to win the British Motorcycle Racing Club's Gold Star for lapping the circuit at over 100 miles per hour. In addition to these daredevil tendencies, she was also very intelligent and studied to become an aeronautical engineer. During the Second World War, Beatrice Schilling wanted to do her part, so she worked for the Royal Aircraft Establishment designing and building warplanes. When complaints about engine cutouts from Spitfire pilots led to a concentrated search for a solution, Beatrice Schilling said she might have an idea. After all, she spent years racing motorcycles and she knew the intricacies of carburetors. However, in the male-dominated world of aviation design, her ideas fell on deaf ears. Her idea was this, a simple device that restricted fuel flow to the carburetor of the Merlin engine. Better yet, it could be installed without taking the aircraft out of service. When it comes to the amazing Mark 1A Spitfire warplanes that took part in the pivotal Battle of Britain, it's time to remind you that this video would not be possible without the support of Rec Watches, crafting a phenomenal line of timepieces that blend time and history together. They are currently supporting the restoration of a veteran of the Battle of Britain, an iconic Mark 1A Spitfire, serial number X4009, flown by Australian Royal Air Force pilot Patterson Hughes, who scored 15 victories in just three weeks during the Battle of Britain. Each wreck watch follows their philosophy of recover, 
recycle, and reclaim, and contains metal from Pat Hughes' Spitfire wreck that cannot be reused in the Warplanes restoration. So by wearing a wreck watch, you're not just owning a timepiece, you're carrying a piece of a Warplane that scored 15 kills during the Battle of Britain. Pretty cool. Check out the link in the description below because when you purchase a wreck watch, a portion of each sale goes towards the restoration fund of Spitfire X4009. Let's get back to Beatrice Schilling and her effort to save these amazing warplanes. Now, when it came to the fuel flow restriction device invented by Beatrice Schilling, it didn't truly solve the Spitfire's problem. However, it allowed British pilots to maintain competitive flight against German fighter pilots. As a result, Schilling went from squadron to squadron with a team of mechanics installing the simple device. The device was immensely popular with RAF pilots and affectionately became known as Miss Tilly's Diaphragm or Miss Tilly's Orifice. After World War II, Beatrice continued to excel in engineering and moved on to racing cars, receiving multiple awards in both. Beatrice Schilling died November 18, 1990 at the age of 81. In the aviation world, dominated by men. It could easily be argued that Beatrice Schilling helped England to defeat Germany in the pivotal Battle of Britain. The ratio of German pilots losing their lives to British pilots was nearly two to one. Now for me, Miss Schilling's story of innovation fires on all cylinders. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. It really helps us out a lot and it allows you to stay updated on more exciting historical content. And thank you to Rack Watches for supporting this video. A link to their X4009 collection of watches will appear in the description below. In the meantime, my name is Ken Stano. Thank you for watching History X and keep exploring the engineering marvels of World War II.